Hey everybody, you're listening to the Songwriters Cross Texas podcast, where we get to know musicians through their stories and hear some of their music. I'm your host, Carl Anderson. Today we're going to be recording at Arlen Studios in Austin, Texas, and my guest is Alex Ruiz. Born and raised on the Mexican border in Brownsville, Texas, Alex Ruiz grew up speaking both Spanish and English on a daily basis. At the age of 10, he moved to Austin with his grandmother, where he connected with a group of kids who were into Van Halen and MTV, and Alex began to see his future. When he was a little older, Alex met Rick and Mark Del Castillo, who brought him into their fiery Latin Texan band as their frontman. In the early 2000s, while playing at a club called Momo's, Del Castillo attracted the attention of director Robert Rodriguez, and they've been collaborating ever since, both on stage and for film scores. It's my great pleasure to welcome Alex Ruiz. Welcome, Alex. Thank you, Carl. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. What are you going to play for us? All right, so I got this song called The Three Bs. Um, I'm still trying to decide, like, Big Booty Baby or Big Bone Baby. I'm still mm. working on it. No. Nope. It goes something like this. Not bad. I got a big bone, baby. She drives me crazy. You know I'm gonna treat you right. A big bone, mama. You know I got a lot of spoon that could boost all night. A big booty, baby. Yeah, I was so crazy. I always gotta steal the show. Uncle loving your sister and your cousin. I was trying to do me wrong, my mama. All oh, my life, this feeling that you're mighty fine. I'm just trying to shine a light a Big booty, baby I was so crazy I was gonna steal the show A big uncle love Your sister and your cousin I was trying to do me wrong My mama Oh, my life This feeling that you're mighty fine Audience of one. <laughs> so glad to see you, to have you here, and to get to, to talk about your career because it's uh, to me, I, I uh, from the second I saw you back in, uh, I think it was like 2000 or 99 or something on, on stage at Momo's. And oh, yeah. I was just like, that's one of my favorite front men ever. And so I appreciate you being here, and I'd like to get into it, actually. Let's let's talk about uh, your early days and, and how you grew up down on the border and uh, right. what that was like and how it all drifted up here and got into music. Yeah, yeah. One of my aunts uh, was a teacher here in, in Austin, um, and um, uh, my, my gra I live with my grandmother. I grew up with my grandma, so... Um, and you know, growing up in South Texas, um, you speak Spanish at home, and then you speak English at school, you know, and and um, and then you speak both languages. Um, every 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 one of my friends that lived in Mexico, um, and then came to school in Brownsville, they they uh, had French classes as well, so they were already like three languages in. Wow, you know, um, and and we were just. Uh, Learning, did learning you, English and Spanish, yeah. Did you have any trouble with English or Spanish? Not at no. all, no. Did, but did you try French? I, I tried. It's one of the most beautiful languages, but I just, you know. I had the same thing. Yeah. It is one of the most, but yeah. I had, I, I like some French words, you know, like, but there's, I just can't get in the rhythm of it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you did speak Spanish and English, and then uh, you got to come up to Austin at, in, when you were about 10. Yeah, around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I moved back here. Um, my dad got married, uh, remarried here in Austin, and uh, I was fourteen, I think, mm -hmm. and at the time, and got to see Sixth Street for the first time. And coming from Brownsville, Texas, you know, Sixth Street's like New York City, 
You yeah. Know? It's it's a it's a big jump. Yeah, but. it's a it's a little or a little New Orleansy too kind yeah. of thing. That, yeah, uh, and that was a good time though, right? I mean, it was Steamboat and Black I, Cat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you heard blues, you heard rock, you heard you know everything on Sixth Street. So yeah. And then I think I remember the Seventh Street was like all the punks. They had the, like the punk hair. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I remember that stuff. Yeah, there are sections, right? Everyone yeah. claims their turf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no so, you, when, so when you came back here in your fourteen and got down to six, is that when music you in the MTV and Van Halen, Van Halen meant something to you, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, we wake, we stay up till like two in the morning to watch a night tracks, and you know, before MTV was MTV, you know, right, and. Uh, and they were when it was playing videos. Yeah, and they was just playing videos all night. You right. Know, so. Yeah. And, just, and you would wait up for them. Yeah, you'd wait up, you know, two in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Nothing better to do. Nothing better we to do. We ain't tired. That's Panama, all I know. <laughs> or whatever, yeah. you know. Go with, ahead and jump. With the, yeah, with the, the kicks and the stuff. The kicks and, yeah. Everybody <laughs> wanted to be Diamond Dave. That's right. That's right. And then Motley Crue came out. And, of course, Aerosmith was, still, was around. And Yeah. You know, I grew up to all of that. I grew up to all. And it made you want to be a front man. Yeah, yeah. I thought I could do it. Well, you <laughs> proved that you could. All right. Um, Thank you. So where did it go from? Uh, you start. You. I think you said you picked up a guitar and and started, but you were kind of not so serious. Yeah, I mean, about I was thirteen when I picked up a guitar and just learned C and yeah. you know, G and D. You know? Right. Those were my first chords, and I guess everybody who starts up playing guitar. Learns those chords exactly, but how long? So how long did it take you to to put a song? Did you get a song yeah, from I mean, GCD? I, you know, I, I you know I, I spent some time with a guitar and I was able to just kind of hone in and 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 I mean those songs I probably don't even remember, right? But, but I wrote them. Right. Yes. You know exactly. And they were probably two chords. <laughs> it, <laughs> you know. So what? That's all you need. It really is two chords and a prayer. And a prayer. Yeah. Two chords and a prayer. Yeah. That's funny that somebody else said it was three chords and the truth, the truth. Yeah, that's right. Three chords and two <laughs> chords and a prayer. I mean, that's a good way to do it, too. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. It's a good start. So you did. So you just you get chops and you ended up going to Los Angeles. I did. I, you know, I was 19, uh, you know, graduated high school, had a job at Pizza Hut, you know, delivering pizzas or making pizzas. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go to LA and um, I talked to my mom and she had said, hey, you know, uh, um, why don't you go check out a few schools over there, music schools and see if, if you like it. And I did and then, uh, but all the, all, you know, all the bill, like the help wanted, you know, yeah. need lead singer. And yeah. it was like, needs to have blonde hair, you know, long blonde hair, has to scream like, I don't know who or whatever. And, wow. and I was like, oh yeah, I'll never fit that. That's incredible. <laughs> it's just I'm done. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That, and you know, I mean, because I say like the first time I saw you, I was like, that's the, yeah, that's what you that's what you want from a lead singer. But so they ruled you out before they even heard you because your hair yeah. was dark or, or not long enough. Right. You know. But yeah. that was kind of the mo with all those metal bands yeah. and stuff in L.A. Right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of all that. <laughs> Yeah. Silly stuff. Motley Crue. You know, yeah, no, I mean, I like, I've seen them play. I was at a Motley Crue concert in New Haven when he was on that rotating drum. Oh, yeah. And uh, th- when he was done, he was supposed to slide down this rope that's like, you know, 100 feet up in the air. And he didn't really grab the rope very well. Ooh. And he went down fast yeah. and hard. And he yeah. kind of, and, and I was like, this show's done. I, it's amazing. He, he played the next night. Right. That show was done. Yeah. But I don't know why he didn't die, except I mean, yeah. it's probably so loaded that it's just like turned to rubber. Oh, yeah. Tommy <laughs> Lee's, yeah. Could be. He's a hero. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> it comes with the territory, people. Yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. Comes with a drink in its hand. Yeah. Yep. After you got sort of disappointed, did you, did you stay in L.A.? Did you come back here? How did it get to meeting the Del Castillo brothers. Yeah, I mean, and I met I met uh, Mark at a party, Mark mm. Del Castillo, and um, we have known of each other in Brownsville because we're from Brownsville, Texas. Got you. It's, it's kind of like all the Brownsville people and the Valley people hung out, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And um, we were at a party, and 
we were actually listening to the soundtrack of um, Desperado, and um, and and that Canción de Mariachi came on, mm -hmm. and little did we know at that time that that was going to be, you know, isn't that incredible? Yeah, the the band that that backs up. You know Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah, and for all yeah. those movies after from the time he saw you guys and just got in there with you, it's yeah. And, but that's so I love stories like that where you what you guys were listening to his thing and yeah. with no knowledge that you yeah. were going to end up hooking. Matter up. of fact, I thought it was an old song already. I thought it was like a, you know, a antique song, you know, from the fifties. Right. Or, but they had wrote it so good that it sounded that way. Right. You know? Very purposefully. Yeah. yeah. They crafted a style from the, the age. That's, yeah. I love stuff like that. Yeah. So Robert Rodriguez, who directed Desperado and Spy Kids and Sin City and amongst a bunch of Alita, you know, all yeah, that. Yeah. He comes to Momo's and he's looking for that band. He right. needs a Latin band. Yeah. And we fit the we fit the uh, description. And um, he, he, maybe he thought I was like an older guy at the time. He. Cause I had the, I had dreads at the time and these like you know the old man hat and the, and I remember shades. that look yeah yeah and he um he thought I was an old man he's like you gotta ditch the old man <laughs> I like his voice but you know I was like dude I'm not old dude <laughs> so so oh, that's no. kind of that's kind of how you know we got a call hey come to the studio and we we went to his house out there and he had a the a home theater and first time I'd ever seen a home theater and mm -hmm. you know um sat there and watched a, a movie in silence, kind of like, and then I saw Rick putting in some guitar, mm -hmm. and then Mark, mm -hmm. and then he's like, yeah, this is where I'm thinking of putting the song right here. I was like, wow, this is, like, just opened up my eyes to kind of like a whole nother world of, sure. you know. Scoring. Scoring, yeah. What a cool world, though. Yeah. And that you really are adding a lot to uh, the, f the to the film. For sure, that was a that was a big shift. I mean, we we were at the, um, um, you know, um, premiere in New York, and I never walked the red carpet or mm. any of that stuff. Right. So you know, we're walking the red carpet, kind of like feeling like outsiders, you know, walking in, and and I could hear like, who are those guys? You know. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, and then we got and sat down, and we got to see the movie. And, you know, I was like, dude, that's you, you know? <laughs> and then, and then, you know, I would be singing and dude, that's you, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. We were just freaking out. I mean, you know, Robert Rodriguez just, he brought Hollywood to Austin. He you did. Know? He made his own Hollywood here. Absolutely. Yeah. He did. And he did it how he wanted to do it without, you know, but without corrupting his right. style. Right. Right. Now, and I love the, you know, the whole outline is, is you know making you know uh hispanic people look like have good roles you know yes you know yes and uh and that's what it's about is of course i know? mean it, it's a the, this the fact that you know hollywood Mar you know when marlon brando came out after he won the godfather and he sent the indian gal up to to, to, to not accept it and say you know marlon's sent me up here because he doesn't like the way hollywood treats indigenous people and anybody wow. for that matter yeah he, he went on uh yeah he went on a talk show dick cavett and he he sat there for 40 minutes dick cavett was trying to get him to talk about dumb stuff and he was waiting to tell why he didn't and it was a, it's like one of the most amazing things you'll see yeah to be able to affect that and to to make change robert was really timely to be able to do that and yeah it's, it's great to see when Robert and Quentin Tarantino hooked up and yeah. said, "You know, we're not, you know, we're turning our back on." That's right, and that. and we're gonna have some fun too. The yeah. Grindhouse, the Grindhouse stuff was that was some of my favorite yeah. stuff from the from that era. Man, so good. We tried, we made that Grindhouse trailer ourselves. Oh yeah, Ben and I. <laughs> so you've traveled, and now you know you get into this, and now you've traveled all over the world. Um, what are some of your favorite places you've been? Wow, I love Switzerland. Mm. Uh, our first um, our first gig was at in Geneva, um, and it was for um, really nice. Um, they were they were um, celebrating Gloria Felix. This was a movie star from from Mexico. Yeah, oh, cool. And um, from the 
30s and 40s, I believe, mm -hmm. and possibly into the 50s. Um, but anyway, um, that was the first time I, we had, you know, landing into Switzerland and, and looking at this beauty that you've never, I've never seen, you know, cascades, uh -huh. uh, water and mountains and ice and snow and oh, wow. green all around it. And right. just like, wow. And of course, Spain. is it Montreux? Is that where it was? Montreux. We, well, that this was Geneva, but Montreux. Yeah, we played Montreux as well. Wow. And that was a that was a good trip too. Montreux is, you know, that's one of the best. You know, where do you call it? Like, you know, if you do that, that check. Yeah, yeah. Um, matter of fact, we um we walked to you know we were walking around Montreux with you know smoke on the water, the mm. lake, right? Exactly. And um, there's this big old Freddie Mercury you know, statuette, and it's like, what? You know, out, on, out of nowhere, I was like, what is what is going on? And so we kind of walked into this little plaza area, and right across the, you know, the statuette, was this lady outside, well, oriental lady, she was smoking her cigarette and drinking her tea, and and we walked into the shop and said, hey, well, we're going to go in here and, and you know, buy a, buy a few things for the family back home. And so... Um, we get in there, it's all Queen and Freddie Mercury stuff, and we're like, what? What's going on? Like With the Freddie you Mercury, You know, what's, yeah. what's up with Freddie Mercury? And she goes, well, he used to live right up there. Oh. <laughs> so he was like, you know, just wow. a, so around the corner. Right, so it's and an homage to So Freddie. Yeah, so he would come down, smoke cigarettes with her, drink tea, and talk about stuff other than music. That's amazing. Yeah, and so she just learned to love him and... <laughs> and they, these are the kind of people you meet along the way. Yeah, yeah, like you, like well, yeah, like, like ben, me and Ben you know? for sure. These yeah. these these crazy cats with us too. I mean, yeah. it's yeah, fellow travelers. Yeah, but that when someone tells you, "Look, I used to sit down here with Freddie Mercury and smoke and talk about stuff." Wow. I mean, you, you know, yeah. your your skin starts to exactly to do the old it, wow. yeah, and it stays there. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I think he's touching me on the shoulder right now. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, one of those deals. I have to, I have to tell the story because it's one of my favorite oh, yeah, rock yeah. and roll stories, and I checked it out with you to make sure it was okay. But you, one of the best, best rock and roll stories I ever heard was you, and you said, "I don't remember where you were overseas." I want to say, and you, and you must have been having a party, and you woke up on the plane, yeah, and you had a big buck knife under your jacket yeah and they somehow let you on the plane well yeah it was in my bag it was in <laughs> it was like this big and i almost brought it but i was like no you know someone's gonna get fired but uh but it was like how do you miss a freaking blade like this big? <laughs> that was we weird. were actually doing a, a movie in in uh in new mexico and that blade was part of the the you know, oh okay the That's, scene i see and it's like you know that big and and for some reason, something came to me, said, hey, check your bag, you know? And I said, oh, no. I looked up in there. I, I zipped it. I was like, oh, <laughs> what do I do with this thing, you know? So, so uh, you know, uh, it's. I still have it. I still That's have it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so funny. Undercarriage, <laughs> you know? But that. But again... So you, you got a pass because you were a rock star. I have no idea if that guy was, you know, sobering up or what, but, you know, one of those deals. It's like, how do you miss that? That's so cool. <laughs> On that note, yeah, let's do another song. Sure, sure. I'm going to do a, a slower song, so if you got someone to dance with, Carl. Um, Cleveland? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's called Snowflakes in May. Shows for the ocean tide. Been living in New York City for some time. Hollow beauty, it can be. Snowflake 
wanna lay in your warm embrace. Said my friend, have you ever been? I got lost in her eyes I smiled and then All the beauty It can be contained It's a sweet caress Of an open flame Snowflakes in me Like snowflakes in me I just want to lay In your warm embrace Thank you, brother. I mean, that's really nice. That I guess we can uh, use that as maybe a segment of like I'd like to talk about how you approach songwriting. Um, yeah. Uh, if, if there are one way you do it. Uh, or, yeah. I yeah. mean, there's good. Like we were just talking about memories. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, every, every. If we can remember. <laughs> yeah, if we can remember, that's right. Um, and, and most of those, uh, the good ones that stay with us, the, you know, the, the touch. It, you know. Touch of your 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 loved ones, mm. uh, and those that have gone, and then the the ones that you know that that you call your own family, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and those kind of memories. That's that's what stays with you, you know. Yeah, that's what everyone can relate to. I hope, you know. Yeah, and I think they can whether they know it or not. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, what people. 
I think that's why holidays and Christmas are so like when people g- gather, it's like, OK, we don't have our jobs for a minute. We don't have school for a minute. We can all be together for a minute and just yeah. sit around and eat and take naps. And, yeah, you know, whatever. you know, that's, that's the one thing I loved about Europe is that everybody has a month to two months off. Ah, we're paid. Right. Paid. Right. And, <laughs> like that's like unheard of here. You know, it's like a rat race and yeah. everyone's trying to make it and everyone's trying to. You know, buy the nice cars and the nice houses, which is not bad. You know, right. it's not a bad thing, but like you could you could get lost in there and, and forget about the people do beautiful things that you yeah. have at home. Or, exactly. You know, they people. If you, I think when you get caught up in uh, that, that stuff, is you lose you just lose uh, focus of the little stuff that's really is the stuff you you want anyway. The, yeah, the, and just appreciate and, what you have, and it's only there for a minute. You know, exactly. We only got so long to be here. So it's right. I mean, time's ticking. Let's get let. Yeah. <laughs> let's get into that. It's right. just a dream, baby. Yeah. We're having a dream and you're hey. wearing each other's dream right yeah, now. Brother, right now I'm in a wheelchair at an old folks home. And I'm right next to you. <laughs> and, we're, and we're smoking a damn cigarette. Yeah. Right. Why not? And having a sip. And we're going. That was pretty fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's no go doubt. see what the girls are doing. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Um, so you, when you were pro, so you, that was you know an idea, and it, so you started with um, just a sentiment, and yeah, um, yeah. some people, uh, you know, they pick, they write a phrase or a title, and then they build a song from that, and that's how they like to do it. Some people hear a chord. Some people do it in both ways. They're like, that was this is good, but I don't know what goes with it. Yeah. Uh, and then they just leave them around until they fit together. Right. Do you have anything in specific? It, it, it like hits me at, at like, you know, three or four in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll just tap in. Right. So it's and whenever it's like it hits right you. There and and that, that'll do it. Uh, or or it's just a melody that just won't quit mm-hmm. in my head. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just start humming something and then start saying something. And, okay, oh, this, is, this is a good idea. Get the pen out and just sit with it for a minute. Yeah. Do, do you write on guitar, piano, both? Both, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you inspired by any writers in particular? I mean, everybody who writes, <laughs> and anybody who writes can tap into that river. You know, yes. it's for everyone. It is for everyone. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm probably a million people inspire you, just like me. You know, it's like yeah. I've, you know? I mean, I've got I got people I follow in Spain. There's there's this girl named Mala Rodriguez. She's like the first Spanish female rapper in Spain. Cool. Uh, and and yeah, I just fell in love with her. You know. Just, right. What? And it's Spanish rap. This is real. But is it is yeah. it a ra- is it rap? There's some rap and there's like just some is really it? cool, you know, just melodies and 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 what she what she brings to it, the forefront is like you know kind of like the world spinning and and we're all you know spinning with it and we're all blended together. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I think that's the main thing. I love it when genres uh, open up, you know, and that the, they add. You know, and so now we have all these crossbred genres, but that's yeah. it. The whole thing. It's like, let's. Why do we have to pigeonhole anything? You know, right, right. No, that's the whole thing. I think that everyone's kind of done with. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, know? Y- you know, like yeah, those the, the those guys who like their punk and rockabilly are like, we want to bring a mariachi horn into this, and and why not? It sounds excellent. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Who cares if no one else did it like that? And who cares if you? you know have a harder time getting a gig yeah do it how it talks to you right yeah exactly exactly inspiration is a great thing that's what it is bro it's a breath of fresh air and do you have ways like sometimes we fall off inspiration you know and that uh, obviously it happens you can't just stay inspired you need times to re re up you know yeah yeah. Um, do you do you do do you have things like when you're not inspired that you do to because that can be pretty frustrating when like you're as far as like part. do I always write yeah um, and and you know I write ideas mm-hmm. I write you know when when there's a when a full song hits me I'll play it I'll, I'll spend time with it um, you know when I when I leave the table you know mm-hmm. and I go be a dad or right 
you know, go be a gardener. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or whatever it is. Take you out know. the trash. Yeah, take out the trash. Yeah. And, I mean, those things are still in my head. They're still working in there. It's, it's kind of like, you know, like the oven. You just put the... Yeah. You put the, the the banana bread in and it'll be done in a minute. You that's know? right. <laughs> and it's great. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. That's so that's I love that. I have a similar thing. Yeah. So you, you just you let it cook, but you but you don't stop tending to the rest of the stuff. Right. In fact, they're feeding it too. Right. While you're while you're feeling it. That's right. Is that a good it. way to put it? Yeah. So you don't yeah, you don't neglect the people around you or your chores or whatever it is right. you have to do but you keep the pen handy and you keep the guitar handy so that yeah because when it's time it's time exactly that's exactly. great now do you, you write with other people as well i do i and matter of fact i started writing with um a, a young boy uh, he's he just f turned 14 um when i started writing with him when he was 12 that's is this um, is what i want to hear yeah and his name's kane alvarado and um, I believe, you know, people will be hearing about him soon. I know for a fact, only yeah. because I was supposed to come see you a couple nights ago uh, at the Saxon to see this, and yeah. I and I was in the middle of writing, so I couldn't break away. But I was lucky enough that to catch it on the stream, and I my I mean my mouth was open the whole time, and I yeah. I was like, this is a kid. I was I I thought I was going nuts because I uh, I was hearing the music, and I was like. He looks like he's fourteen or thirteen, you know. Like, yeah. am I missing? You know, but and he is. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> and he's, he's that just good. A kid. Yeah, and he's that good. And yeah. so you've you've uh, you've helped him a little bit. I mean, you brought him up obviously, and you're working with him and, and co-writing. Co-writing with him, and and you know, we got more co-writes to to do. And uh, but I'm really proud of him. And nice. you know, me too. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know him, but I was proud to see that. And yeah. I'm, and I know that. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about giving back and when you, you know, you get older and you've been fortunate enough to be in this business and then some young people come along. Yeah. It's real important. to You got to listen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then when somebody like that comes around, it's like, you can't help but listen. Yeah. You know? It's like, whoa. No, you. That's coming out of. Yeah. That boy right there or yeah. that girl. You know what I mean? It sounds like a mixture between Carlos Santana and Neil Sean with the the taste of his licks. Yeah. Like if if someone told me that's who was playing, yeah. I would have believed them. For sure. <laughs> that's that kid. He has a lot of fun to look forward to. Yeah. Like wood. good good luck to to <laughs> Kane. I'm we I hope Kane can be on this show. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'd love to bring him on. For sure. What else is going on for you right now? You sit you I know you got a video uh but what else do you have? Recordings? Yeah, I mean uh We've been doing like soundtrack work, um, you know, here and there. Mm -hmm. And so there's a movie that just came out. Um, oh, yeah. The yeah. 29th. Yeah. Um, of April. And it's called The Green Ghost. Yes. And uh, it's like a wrestler, uh, car, car salesman turned wrestler type. I still haven't seen it. The trailer's amazing. Yeah, the trailer's pretty fun. Um, Danny Trejo's in it. Yeah. Um, Patricia Vaughn. It, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Patricia Vaughn, yeah. exactly. She's going to be here soon. Uh, we, de, uh, the whole concept is br it's funny. Yeah. Funny, funny, funny. Yeah. And you guys got to score. We got to score uh, um, Eye of the Tiger. Uh, <laughs> Ojo del Tigre, you know, in Spanish. And, uh, oh, the yeah, tigre. so we did two versions, an English and a Spanish, and I don't know which one is on, on the... Um, you know, there might be one for the, you know, the movie and then one for the CD or the. Right. You know, or they. Yeah, they might release them both. But they. Yeah. Th wasn't it uh, you how that worked? Did you play you you translate into Spanish and sang and then they went, we kind of maybe we should do it in English. And then you did. It, and then they went, wait a minute. Let's do it in Spanish, too. Let's, yeah. let's have both to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, That's what I think. It'll be like special. You know, it'll be a special ad or something like that. Right. And if not, we'll just do it anyway on a live, you know, one day with Robert. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I th when you told me that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to hear that in Spanish with yeah. you singing it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They tried. They, I mean, did they did they do anything to the uh, to the music part I mean, of you'll it? Ha you'll have to hear it. But I mean, it's 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 it sounds bigger than it used to be. I, I think that's what I think. Like the drums and the, bigger, you know, it has, mo it has movie Bigger drums. than a Rocky movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, so that, that's what, that's what I felt like. 
Mark Del Castillo's work with Robert so much on on doing the music cues and stuff that he's taken so much out of, you know, just learned so much right. from what would a, a scene like just a small scene be right. or do? You know, what can a, a song do or just a, a sound? Yes, you know, I think I am a as a filmmaker. You know, we've made a lot of a lot of things, and I. I know for a fact that the sound and the score are probably in the end. If you don't have your sound right, you got nothing. Right. And if you have a great score, especially if it's an un, you know underscore, right. it's you're not necessarily supposed to notice it as when you're watching. Right. But it's if you don't have it, it's a much different movie. Right. I mean, like that that movie we did a long time ago. Beep beep beep. You ever remember that one? <laughs> Big Deke Six, yeah, unfuck with the something like that. Yeah. Unfuck with the ball. <laughs> oh, that was Bob Fonseca. Was, yeah, was, did the voiceover for that. So that so that was part of a grindhouse trailer that yeah. th we were, right before we made strings, which was our first full length. Right. We were we did that, and we learned so much from it. You yeah. know, like it was like it really was like, wow. And then we did another one uh, for a, a John Woo thing that was and i thought in a way even better but like i have people th those are 10 15 years old now yeah. and i have people that literally they'll see me and they'll be like it's big deke and that movie never got made <laughs> so that's yeah. an interesting thing yeah. alone yeah. you know and that but that also was prompted from robert and quentin to right. people let's get them in the action here yeah exactly and then that hobo with a shotgun is what won and that that was cool i yeah. liked hobo with a shotgun yeah <laughs> yeah so, so you actually have a band with Robert Chingon. Yeah, Chingon, that's right. We uh, we were talking about it a little earlier. With, uh, we did um, the Doug Psalm tribute. Yeah, a few years back, I was right? there for that. It was gorgeous. At the Paramount. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Robert wanted to do uh, Hey Baby Kipaso, and so uh, it's funny because because uh, he'll be like, Hey, can you sing low? And I'm like, Oh man, you know, because I. You know, he, 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 like so low that like tears are rolling out of my eyes when I'm doing, a, you know, the the uh, the recording or or you know. So hey, baby, get us so. How do you get that you know, low? I try, I try. You just you know yeah. try to be Carl Anderson for a bit. Yeah. You know, but, yeah, you just get it lower. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so that so we did that and and um, and that was a, that was a fun time. But we haven't really played much. Um, for for a minute, um, he's been real busy, you know. Well, and COVID knocked everybody off, you know. So yeah. I, it's yeah. I feel like it's hard to uh, even say. Like when I was talking to Ephraim Owens, I was trying to get a feel for how many road shows he did in a year. But I I, I was like, I mean, pre COVID, because there's no, you know, like right. what was it going like up to then? Right. You know? I mean, you know, it's just everything just stopped. It did. Like the clock just. And yeah, needs new batteries. Every I, it made me close. I got closer to the people I lived with. To God. And to God. <laughs> G-O-D. I did. Yeah. Well, I, I did, though. Yeah. I really did. That's good. I think it is, too. I wouldn't yeah. trade it for anything. Yeah. If you have God, you don't trade. Right. And, you know, and God God is God to everybody a different way. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So. Everyone has a role they're supposed like to play. to play tricks on us. Uh, taps, yeah, <laughs> that, for sure. Um, no, no yeah, step it up. You know, they're, yeah, they're, no doubt. <laughs> so, any any uh, personal shows? You said you're going to make a video. Any personal shows for you coming up? Oh wow, yeah. Well, Del Castillo's still doing its thing, uh, and then there's the Del Castillo Trio, and um, where we, you know, we have like 20 years of music mm -hmm. that you know we've written and recorded, and um, and of course we have all the Robert Rodriguez stuff that we bring on um to do right um as well and so that's kind of what you know what what uh, the trio does it, it kind of hones in on all the songs that great the live band this six-piece band doesn't do any and there it's two guitars and a singer yeah so, so I, no I, I drums try, I, I play a little do you play a little percussion i play a little guitar i got you yeah. so three guitars no yeah. percussion yeah i need to come check that out yeah yeah I'll invite you to the next one. I feel like uh, you know we could roll for all day and it'd be for fun. sure. Um, but, but we need to turn the lamp on right here yeah, first for it to get real, it. guys. Then we got it. You know, <laughs> then we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut. We're gonna get some margaritas. <laughs> and 
There we go. <laughs> but let's, uh, if you would close us out with one more. Okay. Um, this is a song called Brass Knuckles. You illuminate the room with your shining new perfume and your brass knuckles, yeah. Hey, I'm so proud to see those you shining down. Alex Ruiz, everybody. All right. Alex, thanks once again for being here. We couldn't be happier. If you want to watch the full episode of this, please go to our Songwriters Cross Texas YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and thanks a lot again, Alex. Thank you, bro. My man. You got it, brother. Boom. <laughs> Good. <laughs>